Let's continue with nervous system anatomy by looking at the eye. So if you look here, we have an image of an eye model, and then we'll look at some images from cadavers and from the anatomy physiology revealed. So when I'm looking at this view of the eye, this clear window that I'm seeing here that you can actually put contact lenses on is your cornea. You'll notice that underneath is the colored part of the eye. This circle is the iris, and it forms a hole in the center here, which is the pupil. Now the cornea is sort of like the window of the eye that's letting light through into these interior chambers. It's continuous with this white part of the eye out here, which is called the sclera. And the sclera is a fairly tough connective tissue layer that helps to form the structure and support for the eye. And it is moved by these extrinsic eye muscles out here. So you can see those here over on the right side as well. Now if we look at an anatomy and physiology image, again, this kind of window right here is the cornea, so that's like the window to the eye. Right behind the cornea here is a fluid-filled chamber. This is my anterior chamber, and this is filled with a very liquidy substance called the aqueous humor. So think aqueous is water-like. And then we have the colored part of the eye right here, which is the iris. And it can constrict and expand to change the size of the hole in the middle there, which is the pupil. This white part of the eye here is the sclera. And then, as we mentioned before, is moved by these extrinsic eye muscles. If we look at a model of the eye, now they've removed the lens right here. So this is the cornea. This is my anterior chamber that's filled with the aqueous humor. You've got the lens would be right here, and we'll see that in a minute. The fluid in my anterior chamber, as well as changing the shape of the lens, is done by this structure here, which is called the ciliary body. This large posterior chamber here is filled with a thicker fluid called the vitreous humor that looks almost jelly-like. You'll notice that the eye has really three main layers. You've got this inner kind of pinkish layer you can see here, which is the retina. The retina is what is going to receive and respond to those light waves using rods and cones. Just think C for color. Rods are going to give me kind of light and dark. The middle layer between the retina and this outer sclera would be my choroid layer. And then that outer layer is the sclera. You'll notice in the back that we have sticking out the back of the eye and heading this way is my optic nerve. So if we look at another view here from my APR image, again, this is my retina. The fluid-filled anterior chamber is filled with a fluid called the aqueous humor. This kind of muscular ring or sphincter muscle here is the iris. It forms a hole, which is the pupil. The size of the iris 
and also the shape of the lens is determined by this structure called the ciliary body. And then here you can see that nice big lens. And that lens is going to bend the light that's coming in and focus it on those rods and cones in the back of the eye, on that retina. So you can see the inner layer is the retina, uh, middle layer is the choroid, and the outer layer is the sclera. So it's sclera, choroid, retina. And then this would be my optic nerve. Now this is a view from a cadaver. So here I can see again the cornea. The aqueous humor would fill this chamber. The vitreous humor would fill this chamber. The lens, the ciliary body, the pupil, and the iris. The inner lining is the retina. The outer lining layer is the sclera. From this image, you can't really distinguish between the sclera and the choroid. And then this is my large optic nerve. Now, if we look at the ear, we've got over here an APR image. And over here we have a model. So we're going to kind of zoom in on each of these and compare the structures on each. So let's first start with our APR image here. So this structure is my pinna, or it can also be called the auricle, and that's what funnels the sound waves into the ear. This is my external auditory canal here, the tympanic membrane, and then you have three bones. The first one is the malleus, and then the incus, and then the stapes looks like a little stirrup on a saddle. This tube here is used to adjust pressure, and that is your pharyngotympanic or eustachian tube. So pharyngeal tympanic or eustachian tube, and either one is acceptable. Be sure that you're practicing the spelling on all of these over and over again. The snail shape here is the cochlea, and this is going to help me with hearing and transmitting these sound waves into action potentials in my vestibulocochlear nerve. The vestibule and the semicircular canals are going to give me balance and angular motion. So if we zoom in here on the tympanic membrane here, then we can see this is my malleus. Behind it here is the incus. And then there is the stapes. Here's the beginning of that pharyngotympanic or eustachian tube. If we look at the model, we have the auricle or pinna, external auditory canal, tympanic membrane, pharyngotympanic or eustachian tube. The bones are a little tricky to see here, so we'll look at those in a different view in a minute. You can see part of the cochlea coiled up here, and you can see part of the semicircular canals here attached to the vestibule. So if we look at it from above, there's that tympanic membrane malleus, sorry, malleus, incus, stapes. It's going to be easier to see those on the other images that we have. Cochlea. And then here are my three semicircular canals attached to that vestibule underneath. And then there's my vestibulocochlear nerve that gives me that sound and balance information. 
The last thing we need to look at is the spinal cord. So here what you're looking at is a vertebra. So this is the body of the vertebra, and this is the vertebral foramen. My spinal cord runs right through there. You can see the kind of butterfly-shaped gray matter in the middle, the white matter surrounding it. So that's the opposite when you compare that to the brain. You've got the dorsal root, the ventral root. The dorsal root has a dorsal root ganglion, and then where those roots come together is the spinal nerve. So dorsal root, ventral root, dorsal root ganglion, spinal nerve. If I kind of zoom in here, I can see a little bit better. There's that gray matter and then the white matter surrounding it. And you can just see the central canal that runs through the middle and has cerebral spinal fluid in it. Now, my dorsal root is sensory, so you've got incoming information. My ventral root is motor, so you have outgoing information, which means my spinal nerve is a two-way highway. we look at it from an image of a model, this is my gray matter, this is my white matter. Where you have the enlarged area here is the dorsal root ganglion, which means that this is the dorsal root, which makes this one the ventral root. Where they come together is the spinal nerve. There's a little hole in the middle. That's my central canal. And then we have the anterior and posterior horns of the gray matter. So if this is, side is ventral, that means the side is also anterior which makes these the anterior roots, sorry, anterior horns. And then if this is anterior, this up here is posterior, which means that these two sticking up are the posterior horns. And that is it for your anatomy.